towards me. Well, I'm going to talk here about uh, a function that arrived on videotape machines in the early 90s called pre-read. A pre-read is pre for before and read as looking at. So what it could do was actually look at the tape before you recorded on it. So the, the helical scan machines of which these, this is one type, this is called a Beta SX as it happens, which uh, came into, into actually this one in about 1995. Um, this had the function that the Panasonic D3 had introduced back in the very early 90s and the DigiBeta which came in in 1994. The helical head has lots and lots of heads on it, one for recording, one for video erasing, one for confidence replay where you can actually see the recording that you're making after it's been recorded so you know you've actually got a recording. This is quite important which means you can relatively easily do single, single end recordings and know you've actually got something on the tape. Um, obviously in earlier, earlier machines you, the only way you could find that out was to stop the tape, wind it back and have a look to see if you had anything. So it's got a comfy head and it's got a very special replay head this machine called a dynamic tracking head which actually can move backwards and forwards depending on what signal it's seeing off the tape. Now um, if it's not seeing a, a good signal off the tape it can bend so that it sees a bigger signal so it oscillates backwards and forwards looking for the most amount of RF that it can find and when it finds that RF it knows it's got the most signal it can off the tape. Now this head when you use this function called pre-read it comes into operation and moves itself into a position so that it reads off the tape the material before the record head which is a little bit behind it in time records new material. So what this means is you don't need a third machine to do a mix from one to the other. You can use the recorder as the source of the outgoing vision and mix it with some incoming vision off another machine. So you only need two machines to do a dissolve or a wipe and that obviously saves a lot of money because these machines are very expensive. What it also means you can do is you can superimpose on a tape that you have, and I have a tape here with, some, with a bit of material on it, you can superimpose something like graphics or another shot or a little um, vignette or something like that on top with only one machine. So here we, uh, we have the um, Beta SX machine and uh, all the other machines are switched off so we have nothing else involved. So if I load the, the tape into the machine, Have a look what's on it. So we see there's a shot, the shot on here of a of a house with a with a bike going through it. So that I can control from the edit controller as per normal. So I can jog up and down that, and I've set up an edit. So if I just play that shot for now, all it is is a clean shot. Just come off a of rush's tape. It's roughly 20 seconds long. Um, and what I want to do is add some uh, uh, some sort of a little effect to this with no other things, uh, no other machines involved, purely a vision mixer. So what I need to do to do that is to make sure that the pre-read is switched on, which it now is, and we set up an edit. We'll start the edit at uh, two minutes, and what we're going to do is we're going to add we're going to add a little a little orange box on top of this picture. Simple thing, I mean this could be a graphic, could be a, a name super, could be anything you like. Uh, so, But we're going to add that little orange box. So one side of the mixer is the recorder's output and the other side of the mixer is the composite picture of the original plus the little orange box. So if I fade that off, the edit setup in the machine vision only, pre-read is on. This is very important because if you don't turn the pre-read on, if you go into record and you don't have pre-read on, you'll get an instant vision howl around and that is fairly disastrous if you're making a program. So we'll preview the edit. So what we're looking at, if uh, the monitor on the left which says player two is actually the mixer out. The, monitor, the big monitor in the middle is the VTR out. So we're previewing now and what we see is the shot. Now the mixer out has the little blob. The VTR out doesn't have the little blob. That's because the pre-reads on and it's looking at the early vision. So we, we're going to 
take off the little blob, we're going to hit the red button. It's a seven second pre-roll here because that uh, I found was the most effective sort of time to use. So we're going in, so now the machine is recording, it says edit lock but we can't see the little blob. I bring the little blob on, the little blob is on mixer out but it's not on the output of the recorder. We, it's no little blob there at all. So this is a slight matter of hope for the best. You trust that the mixer output is getting recorded on the machine. So the edit is now finished. And we'll go back and have a look. So I'm now looking at the output of the machine. There's the little blob. The little blobs appeared. So we put that little blob on with just one machine. So what we can do now so what we'll do, we'll, we'll change the position of this little blob, perhaps we'll change. So we're quite happy that everything's working, the pre reads are now. If you're in a hurry to put graphics on, you would just go and do this. So we'll hit the red button. And what we'll see now is on the output of the machine, we'll see the picture with the orange blob, but we won't see the green blob yet. So there we are. Hopefully the green blob comes on, the orange blob comes on, and now the green blob is coming on on Mixer Out. I'll do that edit and that will continue for another five or six seconds. So that stopped, now if we go back to look at the output of the machine, which is what we've actually recorded, we can see that we have the orange blob and the green blob. Green blob. So now what we'll do now, just to, to terminate this thing, we'll set up another another little blob and we'll make that a different colour again. Don't know what we want, perhaps we want a purple blob there to match my shirt. So we'll go and do the same edit again. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing between the recorder itself and the composite, which is the, the recorder plus the little blob. So if I look at the output of the machine, We see eventually the orange blob comes up and then the green blob comes up and on the mixer out the purple blob comes up. And we go to the end of the edit. So there we have on the output of the machine we have all three blobs multi-layered one generation, the background picture, two generations, the background plus the orange, three generations, the background plus the green, four generations plus the output plus the purple. And that took, what, three minutes to do? Um, massive increase in time for putting graphics on tapes. The only thing you had to do was to be very careful that you did get it right, because if you mucked it up, you had a howl round and that was your transmission tape ruined. Um, the programs that benefited from this instantly were Ski Sunday, uh, which was done on two inch downstairs um, for many, many years and, and from recollection stayed on two inch until we moved into the Panasonic D3 world. Now the producer of Ski Sunday was very keen on having mixes between mountain shots and racers and presenters. He wanted mixes everywhere. Now this was incredibly difficult downstairs with uh, four or so two inch machines running into each other with a very crude vision mixer, nothing like as complicated as this one, just a simple AB mixer and we had people running off one minute and 37 second cues back timing and, and mixing across and trying to do the sound as well as, as well as doing the vision mix, it was very difficult. Pre-read comes along, all that's gone away, you can just do one shot, dissolve to one shot, stop, that's that one done, right, the next shot, just make the time factor decreased by what 200 300 400 percent because you could do one shot at a time just like a cut it was effectively like doing a cut but it was a dissolve that's what the producer wanted it was after doing that and we as editors this was new to us in 1992 we got used to it and then you discover all the other wonderful things that pre-read can do like multi-layering like tying up the whole of the vision mixer to perform an, a keying effect and you do that once and you're oh, not quite right and like another little bit of something up there on a tape suite with lots of machines and a big mixer yes you could do it 
but if you pre-read, you do one at a time, at a time, at a time, and it's much, much easier to do it that way rather than try and build an incredibly complicated sequence on a vision mixer. Just do one little step at a time. Being DigiBeta, you never notice the quality difference because it was a component digital system, no loss in quality effectively. Um, and uh, so it revolutionized really the way that the BBC made programs, not so much a case for the external suites, the external uh, facilities houses, because if you were conforming a show, they would have three machines anyway. Um, but we were dealing with stuff that was quick turnaround, didn't have another tape, you only had one tape coming in the football match because the other tape was being used for something else for analysis or something. So we would have had to make more recordings, which is more machines, which is more money. So pre-read, you could mimic the wipe of the host broadcaster, like for instance, the, uh, the World Cup in Paris. Nicely, they did their, the wipe to their replays was a, horizontal, was a, a vertical white bordered wipe. Now that's easy on one of these. So we could mimic exactly the wipe in and out of the replay so our highlights looked exactly like the original that was a that was a huge benefit um as i said the the actual building of multi layers became um more and more useful as we got more and more sophisticated vision mixes um but the main benefit you would have to say is the cost of not having to have another machine to do dissolves <laughs>